Warm good afternoon. Looking at the agenda, I was a uh, little worried if I have to present before lunch, but now it's going to be after lunch. Let me see if I can keep you all awake. Um, so it gives me a, um, a special and humbling feeling to do this presentation um, where the, uh, some of the great presenters have uh, shared the dice um, from the pharma industry. Um, so uh, it's been a decade I've, uh, I've been in the India pharma industry, supporting um, them in the digital transformation. It's been a humbling experience. Um, in, the, uh, panelings, in the panel session that happened prior to lunch, uh, there were a few important topics spoken. And you can certainly recall that uh, cloud adoption was one topic that was spoken. Um, there was uh, computer system validation, and there was analytics and several other topics. So I'm glad that uh, that kind of nicely segues into this uh, session, uh, accelerating innovation through uh, life sciences industry cloud. Um, so this uh, 10 years of experience in this market uh, uh, taught me a lot of things. I had the opportunity to work uh, very closely with uh, several uh, technology uh, leaders and uh, you know, business leaders. And what, what I have personally noticed is India has been a phenomenal success market and it will continue to be so. And uh, as we also heard in the uh, roundtable, innovation uh, across the uh, you know, value chain of pharma industry is the thing which drives uh, you know, the growth. And innovation can uh, uh, come from various walks. And there are certain specific uh, trends uh, that drives this innovation especially in functions like uh, quality and uh, uh, manufacturing. Um, so looking at the current situation and the, for the last several years, moving away from generics, India market has been focusing on several niche areas uh, like uh, you know, complex generics, biosimilars, um, and so on and so forth. Um, that gives a need for accelerating um, product development life cycle, for example and finding new uh, type of supply chains, for example, and so on. That's one trend which we could see. And uh, work from anywhere, work from uh, anywhere across the world, work with partners, work with uh, uh, internal colleagues, and so on, that poses a certain uh, challenges, new ways of working. Um, manufacturing, IT, um, uh, you know, R&D, all these functions, uh, are no more uh, are increasingly uh, seen as uh, partners in delivering innovation and then uh, last but not the least uh, digitization has been around for decades now over the last uh, uh, few years digitization is read in a different way i'm going to talk briefly about it and automation are the you know key industry trends that are driving innovation um, so there are three aspects which I would like to share with you, which actually um, gives an indication that um, you know, life sciences industry itself is modernizing. Um, like I said earlier, you know, 20 years before, uh, pharma companies in India have been pretty much local. And over the last 15 to 20 years, uh, they have truly expanded their global presence. And uh, in the last 10 years, uh, among the customers I met, I have not seen a single customer who does not have a presence in US or Europe or uh, Asia Pacific region at large uh, beyond India. That gives rise to one important point. Internally amongst the colleagues, and uh, externally amongst the partners and so on, how one works in a seamless fashion, whether the current systems and infrastructure support them. There comes the main key word called cloud. And cloud enables that uh, you know, need. Um, process modernization. We have been implementing systems, um, kind of replicating what is happening, uh, you know, in the real life, in the plants, in the quality function, and so on. Kind of a replica, trying to make uh, the system work like uh, what uh, what's happening in the industry, what's happening in the shop floor, and so on. But there is also a nice scope to have uh, the systems uh, you know, uh, adopt to modern processes. 
And uh, if we have to look at an on-premise solution which was implemented about a decade ago or a few years ago, uh, changing that, it's like wiping a slate and then trying to draw something new. And ideally, that is what a lot of people are wishing now whenever I have conversations with them, that they want to uh, either their quality management processes or pharmacovigilance processes or clinical data management processes. They want to adopt to something simple, nimble, so that they are able to um, be on par with some of the global standards. And that is something which is enabled by a, a cloud solution which actually works on a multi-tenant uh, platform. And across the industry, if a GSK is using something, JNJ is using something, so will be the Sun Pharma, so will be the Dr. Eddies, and so on. Thereby, they can adopt to the global standards. And we don't, we don't need to necessarily uh, exactly do the business as they, were do, they are doing. And we do understand that India market has its own nuances. At the same time, it's important to align with the global uh, practices too. So simplicity, agility, and uh, more importantly, a good user experience. Um, over the last uh, several years, or maybe a decade, uh, industry have been implementing solutions uh, due to certain triggers. The trigger can be uh, enterprise growth. The trigger can be uh, audits, for example, and outcome of the audits and so on, and thereby, one after another, uh, there were a lot of systems getting uh, implemented. But then what happens is we've ended in a, a whole bunch of siloed systems which are not talking to each other. Hence, there is a need for having seamless uh, data uh, you know, um, uh, sharing and uh, content sharing and process uh, synchronization across various systems. So there are five themes which I would like to quickly cover during the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, how cloud as a theme will drive innovation for life sciences industry. And like I said earlier, uh, leaving away the complex processes, adopting to simplified processes, and uh, deployed on very advanced uh, technology uh, landscape. Um, we spoke about people present globally across the world, and uh, how do we make sure that they are able to s seamlessly collaborate? And more than that, Having implemented systems on-premise, it's often difficult to adopt to latest technologies and uh, latest uh, regulatory needs meeting them. Uh, GDPR, for example, came up and then they just badly gave about a year to adopt. Those things are uh, definitely uh, in dream when we are using erstwhile uh, systems and that's the reason why we should adopt to cloud. And uh, industry has been filled with malware attacks. Industry has been filled with several uh, performance issues. So to have assurance on security and compliance, um, is cloud is certainly a great answer. And uh, then finally, uh, it's not about just a system which does few transactions. It's about a system which can support a, a process uh, backed by the data and backed by the content also will give the seamless experience. And that's possible by cloud. So is it really giving business results, right? So in the form of uh, accelerating a clinical trial, in the form of doing lesser number of tasks to submit a variation, in the form of doing faster submissions, and also rapid do, uh, execution of change control, and so many other things that can be improvised by adopting to simple, nimble, effective solutions which are implemented on cloud. And overall, it's all leading to actually uh, you know, cost reduction, which is often uh, uh, the immediate knee-jerk knee -jerk reaction is somebody looking into a cloud uh, proposal, they will think that ah, I'm on uh, you know, CapEx model so far, the RevEx is costing me a lot of money and uh, I have to pay every year and so on. But in, in reality, if you consider the total cost of ownership and all these benefits what one is realizing, you will come to know that there is actually cost saving potential. So I thought I'll just spend a couple of minutes about this company which I'm representing here called Viva. Viva is just focused on life sciences and 98% of the business is from life sciences. And globally, we are a $2 billion company, um, roughly 6,500 people, and uh, 1,100 customers uh, uh, you know, globally. And in India, we do have office in Mumbai and Hyderabad, and we are primarily focused on commercial and quality business. And, and uh, to our surprise, in India, we have 23,000 users who are using Viva, MNCs, uh, local organizations, and so on. And then we have been uh, loudly praised by uh, analysts like Forbes, uh, Deloitte, and Fortune uh, for being very innovative, for being quite fast growing, and so on. Um, just to give you an insight, 
uh, right from molecule to market. Viva is present. Either it is uh, clinical trials or clinical data management or uh, regulatory submissions or safety pharmacovigilance or quality manufacturing and commercialization. We have applications across the value chain. We have roughly about 30 of them which is built on the same platform, meaning the users will look, feel like they are working on a single UI, single application. That's the kind of adoption what we are uh, seeing in the market. Um, just to give you a, a hint about you know, the kind of customers, you, you could see that there are a lot of uh, India leading players also, and um, large global enterprises. And Viva has an equal share in emerging and uh, growing customer uh, markets also. So we have 47 out of the top 50, 16 out of top 20 as our customers. And uh, India is uh, warming up to, uh, you know, uh, big customers in India warming up to uh, Viva. So I'll quickly go through the five blocks which I or originally presented. Um, it's often uh, required to build these uh, processes, grounds up in the systems what you implement. And uh, products of the you know, latest generation gives a whole bunch of processes. For example, quality management system, as where I am from, there are about 25 different business processes pre-configured in the system, built on, based on industry standard and so on. There are also a reference data model, reference implementation model uh, built in these systems. That enables you to adopt to a simplified um, you know, suite of processes, modernized and globalized. Um, cloud, we have been talking about cloud a lot, but it'll be good to quickly, uh, you know, recap, what do we mean by actually cloud here? It comprises of three layers. The foundation is the infrastructure, which takes care of all your security, performance, uh, backup and recovery, and so on. And compliance is the next layer, which takes care of your 21 CFR part 11 compliance, audit trails, et cetera, et cetera. And the core capabilities are the platform capabilities, which supports the UI, which takes care of the workflows, and all those which are required for a basic application to work. And all these are pre-validated before delivering to the customer. And R&D all the way until uh, you know, uh, marketing and sales, all they need to use the application layer. Thereby, rapid deployments are very much possible in these systems. Um, what are the business use cases which uh, promotes, uh, which, which prompts collaboration? So um, pharma companies uh, like uh, Lupin or uh, Cipla uh, or uh, Sun Pharma works typically with thousands of partners. And imagine the amount of effort they put into, uh, stay in touch with them, do audits, all the ongoing collaboration. A cloud system can enable seamless collaboration with these partners without jeopardizing any security concerns, uh, without uh, jeopardizing any security uh, priorities of the organization. And uh, within the organization itself, there are thousands of people working in these companies. They need to really uh, work in a collaborative fashion right from uh, you know, drafting documents, getting through the approvals, maintaining the version control, and so on. And uh, you know, I think it was Sriji who was talking about uh, batch release as a very important process in the earlier uh, uh, you know, uh, roundtable session. So the AI solution, uh, so, uh, sorry, the, um, the uh, um, concept called uh, application, data, and content all put together. Batch data comes from multiple sources, at least 20 different applications. Everything should come together to make that batch release happen. And that is what uh, quality process automation can do. Likewise, uh, there is a recurrence check uh, in, in, a, in a quality sense, uh, finding out whether that particular deviation or something has happened earlier so that we can spend lesser amount of time in handling deviations. Those kind of artificial intelligence-based solutions are rapidly deployable in a cloud solution. Of course, Viva is very big in CRM, and we are the market leader, and uh, proactive engagement with uh, physicians, uh, you know, healthcare providers, uh, patients, and so on is very much happening as we speak, right? And that was one of the key topics spoken during the earlier session. Most importantly, um, whatever happened yesterday, uh, as in, I'm just uh, saying this figuratively, that latest and greatest developments in technology can be adopted to just like that. And, and uh, I spoke about the AI-based solution, and uh, a, a plant operator uh, will have immediate access on a tablet, 
on the next SOP based operation they should be working on, on the visual instructions and so on, just like that. And they will not have to go through reams of binders to uh, you know, find the right one, the latest one, uh, SOP, what they're looking for. And uh, uh, an executive who is on the field, on the run, can quickly approve a particular deviation raised by his team just by looking at this uh, mobile phone. Right? So mobility is a very, very important uh, enabler in this case. So insights on business, uh, we have fantastic dashboards. We don't need a, a separate uh, business intelligence tool uh, to uh, make the dashboards happen. Users can uh, you know, build the dashboards by themselves, which is unheard of in an on-premise world. Uh, we spoke about malware attack, and uh, definitely security and compliance is something which comes by default in the uh, cloud applications, and uh, uh, pharma companies can simply focus their time in uh, their conducting their business, doing their R&D jobs, rather than getting concerned about uh, um, a particular malware attack, uh, shutting down systems for two weeks, and they are still unable to access. These incidents are happening as we speak in the market right now. And uh, when you are working with a cloud company, you simply forget all these things and just simply focus on business. You are going to be audit ready anytime, and you are ready to go to market anytime. Uh, rather than spending uh, hours and hours in, in you know, building transactions as a system. Um, I think this is something which I mentioned earlier, more of a, you know, a, a recurring point. Um, a typical on-premise system gives you a, 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 a solution which you can work on transactions, but what is important is people relate to a lot of data, content, and process workflow together, and that's the speciality of products like, uh, you know, Viva, which gives a completely synchronized, uh, unified feel when you are working on the system. I think that is pretty much it. Just a recap on uh, you know what what we spoke: simplification of processes, improved collaboration, uh, any latest technology quickly adopt to them, uh, security and compliance, uh, you know, adherence to that, and uh, get the access to data, workflow, and process uh, together, content together. So that's that's the uh, value add. What uh, cloud brings to the table, and that is the kind of uh, enabling of innovation that happens for the life sciences industry. Uh, that's about it. Um, I'm kind of maybe a minute over. Uh, we have a stall there. We have some colleagues, uh, Pradeep, Umesh, and myself, uh, Vijay there. If you want to have uh, more conversations, you can feel free to come and meet us. Um, yeah, if you want to sh share some feedback about the presentation, you can scan the QR code. Uh, not sure if you have time for a Q&A. If you have, then I'm happy to take any questions.